Hello and welcome to Sean's Test Bench. Today we'll be building a custom red and black theme uh, gaming PC. Uh, we're going to go over the custom uh, modifications I've done to the case and some of the other hardware. Uh, we'll also go through a detailed uh, build log of everything it takes to assemble a computer. So let's, uh, let's get started. Let's go over some of the modifications I've done. Uh, this case was bought from Newegg. It's a DIY PC uh, M89-R. Uh, it's a micro ATX case. Uh, I sanded the entire case and painted it. I'll include some uh, slide videos of the, in, in the slide photos into the video so you can see. Uh, I also installed a side panel full view window that was not in the case. I had cut that out and did all that. I painted the hard drive tray that fits in the five and a quarter uh, optical drive slot in the front to save space in the other hard drives. Also painted red the memory card reader that will be installed in the 3.5 opening in the front and also the two PCI slot covers just to accent them a little bit better. The graphics card, I uh, they came with green stripes and I just accented some of this with red permanent marker to kind of give it to blend in with the red and black theme of the build. Uh, all that can be removed with rubbing alcohol. Uh, the same is with the motherboard. All this can be removed with rubbing alcohol and it turn it right back into the black and blue board that it was. I just think it'd look much nicer with the red and black theme being uh, painted that way. But like I said, you can take all the ink off the graphics card and motherboard with rubbing alcohol. So, and let's take a look at the hardware I'm going to be using on this build. So, manual and uh, driver kit. Okay, this is a an ASUS M4N68T-M, a version version two. This uh, motherboard has an AM3 socket. It supports dual channel DDR3. Uh, it has turbo key, auto tune. Uh, core and locker. It's all solid capacitor. You can look up the specs if you want to know anything more about this motherboard online. So that's the motherboard we'll be using. The processor I got for this is a AMD Phenom Venom 2 times 4 840T. It's a quad core, 2.9 gigahertz uh, stock speed, 3.2 in turbo, which uh, the motherboard supports. It's a 95 watt processor. Uh, I also picked up a stock factory red heat sinking fan, uh, AMD. Uh, it supports up to a 125 watt processor. It's actually, this was a uh, came with a six core processor. Uh, I'll be using it for this because it's red and it matches nicely. The memory we'll be using is a G Skill DDR3 1333 and there's a two four gigs so it's eight gigs total uh, going and installed in this motherboard. The graphics card is an Asus GTX 460 direct CU uh, as I showed in the photos I accented it in red to match the build uh, this has a 1 gig of DDR5 it's a 256 bit uh, memory bandwidth it's fully overclockable these are really good cards you can look up the specs online for this also the power supply I'll be using is a Rockfish semi-modular 550 watt power supply 
It's 80 plus. I installed a 140 millimeter red LED fan in this power supply. It came from the factory with a blue LED fan and uh, of course it would clash with the build so I changed it out with a red 140 millimeter fan. We'll be using this in the build. The hard drive, it's already mounted in a hard drive tray. I'll be installing this in one of the optical drive slots. It is a Seagate Barracuda 500 gigabyte, 32 megabytes of cache. So it's a pretty fast mechanical hard drive. It should do a pretty good job of, of running programs, transferring files, playing games and such. Uh, generic memory card reader, USB. Uh, just so a lot of people have cameras and like to be able to transfer files easily. Also we have an ASUS DVD multi-drive. Uh, this is brand new from uh, Newegg. They're only I think $15. So I mean a really good deal and they, they burn about every kind of CD other than Blu-ray of course. We'll also have a red 120 millimeter fan for the front of the case and an 80 millimeter fan for the rear of the case. It will be installed so that should uh, cover all the hardware. So uh, let's start and let's start building this. Okay, let's get started here. Remove the thumb screws. This is the uh, window I cut into the side panel. Let's set that aside. Uh, this case came with uh, silver screws uh, because it was silver inside. Uh, I have enough leftover screws from other builds. I just put together my own package of uh, black screws for all the hardware for this build. As you can see, I already routed some of these wires. Here's the cutouts I made for the front panel connectors for the motherboard so that it's not out in the open. There is hardly any cable management room at all inside this uh, case. They're just inexpensive cases and I guess you get what you pay for. So USB 3 also is not supported by this motherboard so I will not be hooking that up. Uh, I know you can get an adapter from USB 2 to 3, but it has uh, two USB 2 ports on the front anyhow, so I didn't think it was really necessary. Okay, I think first we're going to install the power supply. So let's uh, turn this around so you can try to get a good look at it. Here's our 550 watt rockfish power supply. Just uh, slide it right into the back. And let me find the screws for it. That's not it. Here's power supply screws right here. Just get them all started before we tighten them down. It helps uh, get everything lined up. started let's uh, tighten them down okay I'll just set this out of the way for now let's get the uh, let's go ahead and install this front fan get that out of the way because I have to remove the front cover to do that and then once it's installed, I won't have to get back in this cover. We just uh, 
try the little clips out. Careful not to mar anything or mess anything up. And there we go. Lay that out. Let's get our 120 millimeter red pan. Now on this pan I deleted the uh, three pin to four pin connector and all the adapters and extra wiring harness. I uh, soldered the uh, leads directly to a four pin Molex connector from the, for the power supply and adhered it with epoxy to the bottom corner of this pan so it's permanent. There's no extra cables or connectors. Once installed a cable come right from the power supply directly to this pan It'll be a nice clean look and I don't want to have extra adapters or cables laying around. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and install that now. As with anything, just get them all started. And then after everything's lined up and all screws are started, then we'll tighten it down. Okay. Now that that's installed in there. Let's put our front cover back on. And that's that. Let's turn it this way here for now. Let's install our motherboard back plate. of your I.O. ports. Uh, speakers are normally towards the PCI slots and the keyboard and mouse hookup is always towards the, well in this case the power supply. Okay, now before we uh, install the motherboard, let's install the CPU uh, the memory and the heat sink on the, the motherboard before we install it. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to set this aside. 